Bill. Welcome to iFilm. Thanks. This film poises a lot of interesting... You mind if I smoke? No, please. I'll just put it behind my ear so I look cool. <laughs> okay. It poises a lot of interesting political, ethical questions in a very entertaining way. Mm -hmm. What questions interest you? The notion of spin, uh, as you see it in our film, in, in Thank You for Smoking, it's hysterical because this guy's job is to spin the facts about smoking cigarettes for big tobacco. And they're such a cheap shot. I mean, it's so easy to make fun of them. When the book was written, I think it had more teeth. But in the past 10 years, tobacco's been sued and lost, and everybody knows it now. Um, but it has a bigger message, which is everything is spun now. And it's one thing to spin products. Um, it's another thing to spin politics, to spin a, a hurricane, or to spin a war, or to spin spying. That's not funny. Now, do you think it's more timely now? Or are we just more, or some of us, more aware of it? I think it's more timely. I think there's more, there's more spin in the political process than ever. I mean, when the Catholic Church is having to spin uh, things, what's going on? It's been around forever, but I feel like it's reaching epidemic proportions. And it's and the the worst part is that it breeds a kind of pessimism, so that people don't believe anything. They believe nothing anymore. They they think everybody's crooked. That's a bad state to get in. Your character, you play a senator from Vermont. Does he go to sleep really believing he has the purest of motives? Oh, sure, absolutely. Um, um, I think um, I think almost everybody believes goes to sleep believing in what they believe in. Very, very few people are uh, knowledgeably crooked. Yeah, I think the senator, and there, he's got a point. It's a scourge. It's a terrible habit. It's, it'll kill you, and it stinks, and um, it costs a lot of money. And there's such, I find, better ways to kill yourself if you want to cut your life short. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Yeah. You worked with a first-time director, Jason. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you responded to his script. It's mm -hmm. funny. It's interesting. It's smart. How did he convince you that he had a vision as a director? Um, I I had a brief meeting with him, and uh, he's he's certainly uh, he's got the genes, and he's been around a camera a lot. I know this is his first feature, but he's done a lot of commercials and shorts and videos, so the boy knows what he's doing. And I can call him a boy because he's I've got a pair of shoes that's older than him. Um, he's a, a joy to work with, though. Funny guy. I have to ask you about your wife, because she's had a hell of a year, and I'm sure she's spent years answering questions about you. <laughs> oh, okay. She, Desperate Housewives, um, uh, I'm having a total blank moment, Transamerica, Trans she's fantastic. Right? How much do you two influence your career choices, each other's career choices? We talk about it. She read a script for me that I'm probably going to do, because I was iffy about it, and she said, I think it's funny. Um... Ultimately, though, um, she makes her choices and I make my choices. The only thing we, we talk about, we've got two little kids, so we try to figure it out so someone's at home right. with the kids, so that makes it tough. But we talk about acting. We read roles to each other and ask acting questions, and we work closely together. I wouldn't recommend it for all couples. It could split you right apart, but we seem to make it work.